This is an example where we're solving um, a curvilinear motion in normal and tangential components. So I've drawn out a problem here and I'll just go through and explain what's happening. So here we have a rocket and the rocket is traveling along this curved path, but it remains horizontal through the motion. So for this moment in time, we have a horizontal rocket. It has acceleration coming from two places. So it has six meters per second squared coming from thrust that's propelling the rocket forward and there's also gravity that's pulling the rocket down that has a value of nine meters per second squared in this moment the velocity of the rocket sorry the speed of the rocket is which is moving along the curved path is equal to 20 times 10 to the 3 kilometers an hour the, the problem is asking us, at this moment, find the radius of curvature rho, the increase in speed v at that moment, the change in angle, the rate of change of angle with time, and a vector express, expression for total acceleration of the rocket. Now, if you look at this problem at first glance, you might think that you can use x, y coordinates, right? Because here we have an acceleration going in what looks like an x direction and a gravity here that's going down in a y direction. But we're not going to use x, y, we're going to use polar coordinates. And the reason for that is because the question is asking us for the radius of curvature. The radius of curvature appears in the normal component of acceleration. So we will break down acceleration into n and t components. So what does this look like? I'm actually going to draw a new picture. This time, instead of drawing the whole rocket, I'll just draw its center of gravity here. And I'll draw the acceleration. So we have acceleration from thrust here of value 6, and we have acceleration from gravity here of value 9. Now, we want to project it onto n t coordinates, so we have to define where those are. Well, our center of gravity, according to this picture, is going along this path here. So I'm going to add that here. This is our end direction for the rocket. The tangential direction is going to be tangent to the path of motion. It's also 90 degrees from the normal component, which means I'll draw the tangential direction here. So. We have two values here, 9 and 6, that we need to project onto the coordinate system that we're interested in. And I forgot to draw this angle here is 15 degrees. And I'm actually going to draw the N with a different color, so I'm just going to co color over this with the red. So in order to project, we'll start with this value of 6 here. In order to project it into normal and tangential components, I'm going to draw another line here in red. And what we have here is a right angle triangle where our hypotenuse is this value of 6 and our adjacent is the tangential component and our opposite is the normal component. So now if I were to write this out I would say, I'll start off, I'm going to move this up just a little bit so we'll start with the tangential acceleration. We can say AT is equal to 6 cos of 15. And that's representing this component of the acceleration from thrust projected on that tangential direction. It's moving in the positive T direction, so we leave it as positive. For our normal acceleration, due to the thrust, we'll say a n, this is going to be equal to 6 sine 15. But here we have to look very closely at the angle, because the, the acceleration from this thrust is actually going to be moving in this direction, which means it's actually opposite to our n direction, so we have to say negative here. Now, these values here, the 6 cos 15 and the 6 sine 15, are the components from the thrust in the normal and tangential um, coordinates, but we still have to get this gravity in those, in those coordinates as well. So in order to do this, 
we need to define, and I'm going to do the same thing as before. So I'm going to this tangential direct this tangential component here. If I draw it here, I'm able to make a, a right angle triangle there. The question becomes, is this angle, what is the value of this angle? In this case, we actually know that the angle between our thrust and gravity is 90 degrees, so it's 90 degrees like this. And we know that our angle between our normal and tangential components are also 90 degrees. So, and they're going from there to there. So that means if this angle is theta, then this angle is also going to be equal to the same theta, which means it's equal to 15 degrees. So when we project this 9 onto the normal component, we end up, and it's going in the same direction as n, so it's going to be equal to 9 cos of 15. And then when we project this 9 onto this tangential component, it's also going in the same direction as our t coordinate, so it's positive, and that will be plus 9 sine of 15. Now before I move on, I just want to pause for a second and ask you why am I allowed our tangential coordinate system is here as t why am i allowed to look at it here and i want you to think about that for a minute and the reason is because when we draw out these triangles these are just representative of what's happening at this point so this tangential um, coordinate system here I'm not actually moving it over here, I'm just representing it here so that we can visualize the triangle. If that's not clear, make sure you ask me because that's a really important concept to understand. So now we have created an equation for our tangential acceleration and our normal acceleration. If we just calculate this out, we end up with 7.14 meters per second squared here and 8.12 meters per second squared here. Then to figure out our radius of curvature, we know that an is equal to v squared over rho. Now our speed, I'm going to move this back up, our speed here was given in kilometers per hour. We have to change that to meters per second and it's equal to 5,555 meters per second. So we're going to input that value, he, oh sorry, here. So this is going to be 5,555 meters per second squared divided by rho is equal to 8.12. That means that our radius of curvature is equal to 4.32 times 10 to the 6 meters. So pretty darn large. The second question is asking us for the increase of speed. And the increase in speed comes from the tangential acceleration. So now we have at is equal to dv over dt which is quite simply 8.12 meters per second squared. We don't have to calculate anything else. Our AT is the increase of speed. I'll just circle that. Um, now for part C, the question is asking us for the angular rate theta dot. And I'm going to move this up. So now we're looking for the angular rate theta dot. This actually comes from the same derivation that we used in the previous video, where you have arc length s is equal to the radius times theta. So that would be the same as saying arc length is equal to rho times theta. R and rho are often used um, in similar situations. So then if I take the derivative of this, d over dt, I would end up with ds over dt is equal to rho d theta over dt. So now I've identified this is what I'm looking for. And ds over dt, this is the derivative of the path of motion. So this is the speed 
which we know at this moment is equal to that 5,555. So if I rewrite this, we have speed is equal to rho times theta dot, 5,555 meters per second divided by 4.32 times 10 to the 6 meters is equal to 1.28 times 10 to the negative 3 radians per second. Make sure that you know this is radians and not degrees. The last part, and I'm going to actually I have enough space here, the last part, D, is asking us for total acceleration. The total acceleration is that n, those n and t components combined. So acceleration is equal to 7.14 in, in the normal direction plus 8.12 in the tangential direction, and that's all in meters per second squared. If the question was asking you for the magnitude of the acceleration, that's when you would do 7.14 squared plus 8.12 squared square root, and whatever the answer of that would be would be your magnitude. But then because acceleration is a vector, if you found the magnitude of the acceleration, then you'd also have to find the direction, and you could find that using um, your triangles. So you would have, so you would have your normal direction here. Uh, your tangential direction here, and then your acceleration would be somewhere in the middle here. This would be the direction of your acceleration. To find the angle, there'd be multiple ways to do this, but you could move this normal direction, for example, if you move that to here, then you'd have a right angle triangle here, and you could solve for that angle, and then you could write it out that way. But in this case, it just asks for total acceleration, which just means you need to have both components, the normal direction, the normal component, and the tangential component.